This is Baltimore, Ohio by... Hmm, I need to think about who it's by. Um, it's by Eagle Games. Hmm, yes. There we go. And this is uh, sort of following on from Silverton that I just uh, played recently. Another more sort of economically driven train game rather than the usual um, war gamey stuff. I'll play this six player I think. Um, I've tried it four player briefly. I tried it six player. Didn't like the look of the four player much. The six player seemed much more interesting. So we'll give six player a go again. Um, it's a game about again about making as much money as possible um, by running train companies. Pretty simple premise. Um, and the available train companies are represented by those tokens there at the beginning of the game. And as the game goes on, these will become available. Each of these represents a train company, and I'm hmm, New York, New Haven, and Hartford, Baltimore, and Ohio, Chesapeake, and Ohio, New York Central, Boston, and Maine, and the Pennsylvania are the opening railroads. And then over here, Nickel Plate out of Chicago, Erie, and Illinois Central, and Wabash. However, that's pronounced Wabash. Wabash. Anyway, so those are the rail companies that are available to the players. These ones to start with, and those ones later. And there are basically two ways for players to make money in this game. They will buy shares of the available companies. And the two ways to make money are for those shares to go up in value on this valuation track, and for those shares to uh, uh, and for them to receive dividends uh, from companies based on payouts um, to the shareholders. So essentially, what happens is that. The players uh, will buy shares of various companies based on the cash they have. Um, and once they've done uh, finished doing that, there will be two rounds of those companies running. You can see a market round is where uh, players buy and sell shares. And then there's two business rounds, which is where the railroad companies run uh, and produce uh, profit. And from that profit, they can either keep the money to fund uh, train purchases and track lays, or they can pay out dividends which um, go back to the shareholders. The way um, uh, profitability is determined is essentially each uh, city on the map, you'll see those black and white grids of numbers in hexes with cities so they're pretty easy to spot as you can see Cincinnati, Wheeling, Pittsburgh there, Indianapolis and so on. Um, so if you if we just zoom in on a couple of cities here Pittsburgh and Wheeling you can see six numbers in sort of checkerboard uh, black and white and those uh, represent the income you can generate from that city at each tech level and as the game progresses the the um, the game will move through various levels of technology. So at the start of the game we are in tech level 1 and we are using the leftmost figure. So Wheeling will produce $20 in income, Pittsburgh $20 in income. But by the end of the game Pittsburgh will be producing 80, the far right number, and Wheeling 60. And so there are various cities that, as you would expect, have varying values. Philadelphia and Baltimore both quite valuable as you can see. New York generates a lot of income, whereas New Haven next to it generates very little. If you come down here to somewhere like Richmond, you'll see that for a lot of the game, the cash generated out of Richmond goes down, which is terrible for the C&O, which starts there. Um, so it starts off generating $30 in income, um, but goes down to 20 at Tech Level 3 and stays there until the, until the last Tech Level it goes back up to 30. So you can see, obviously, certain areas um, have a far better time of it than others. Now then, 
this is complicated by the fact that companies have to pay for their uh, running costs for their equipment. So over here you see a tech level chart which runs down here and you can see that at tech level 1 you can build track into one hex, that's the build limit. You can have a maximum of two railroads in any one city so only two railroads can serve any particular city um, and you can see a maintenance cost there of ten dollars so if we we will use these cube we use these cubes to mark out a track so if I just grab a red cube and stick it in Pittsburgh uh, just for sake of example you can see that If we uh, were in this situation and we had a train, let's just pull a train out and stick it there. So if we were in this situation where we just had our cube in Pittsburgh and that was the only city we had at tech level 1, you can see that we would make $20 from Pittsburgh um, and at tech level 1 we would have to pay $10 in maintenance costs and so we would make a net of ten dollars which would be marked on this chart up here boom ten dollars and that way we can track whether in subsequent turns our income goes up or down if it goes up and we pay dividends we're allowed to move our we move our share price up if it doesn't go up or we don't pay dividends or it goes down um, well, if it doesn't go up, if it stays level, or we don't pay dividends, it, uh, it stays static, and if our, share, if our income goes down or hits zero, in other words, we become unprofitable, our share price is going to drop. Um, so this track is keeping, uh, is showing us uh, what, our, what our net income was. Going back to this then you can also see that if we were in this situation and the tech level went up to 2 and the maintenance costs were 20, well we'd probably still break even, uh, we'd, st we'd still make 10 bucks because the income would go up to 30, we'd now be paying 20 for this train and we'd still make $10. But there are some places, for example, the same example in Wheeling, at tech one we'd make ten dollars at tech two we'd now have zero income our company would no longer be profitable and we would be in trouble so there's a kind of race um, against the clock um, to keep adding cities into your network um, which can keep you profitable and ahead of the curve as the tech level increases um, tech is represented by the train cards and there are five at each tech level, so tech one, um, tech one to six, and they slowly fall in price. So if you're an early adopter and you buy the tech early, um, you're getting, you know, a lot of you get a lot of benefit. It's very efficient. In other words, you're paying twenty dollars in maintenance for um, for at tech two. We're paying twenty dollars for maintenance for a train that can run two cities when other people don't have that. Um, they're paying twenty dollars for trains that can only run one city. So you get that efficiency bonus, but the tech slowly gets cheaper as you get nearer and nearer towards the obsolescence of your trains. When someone else is then going to leap ahead to tech three and have the most efficient trains, but they pay a premium for doing so. Um, so there's a juggling act to be done between paying money out as dividends um, uh, to, uh, to increase your score, in, in other words increase your final wealth and to have more money to invest and for keeping it for the company um, in order to buy track and, and new trains. You can see the track costs marked on the map in dollars down here, 60, 20, 10 and so on. There are very few special rules in this game beyond that. Um, there are these coal markers. If you've got track into a, um, a hex with a coal marker then as your sole track lay you can pick up the coal marker and it acts basically like your own private city 
for the amount printed on it, which is $40 on each of the five coal markers. So there's, uh, if you had all five, you'd have $200 coming in in income with no train requirement to serve them. It's just bonus income. At the start of the game, that's very, very powerful because obviously you can see that Harrisburg makes 10 bucks and requires a, a train to service it. And this is making four times the amount with no train to service it. So extremely powerful uh, at the start of the game becomes sort of relatively less important as the game goes on. But still, um, uh, some of these companies, I think this company, the CNO out of Richmond, as we've seen, the income in Richmond falls. Norfolk's not a very valuable city. Washington isn't very valuable either. Roanoke isn't very valuable either. And there are restrictions on building into Philadelphia until the, the Philadelphia Railroad has expanded into Harrisburg and Pittsburgh. Um, so this uh, Richmond, the CNO, Chesapeake and Ohio, if it starts, it really has to go this way and try and grab some coal. But that's also what the Baltimore and Ohio is trying to do out of Baltimore and what the Philadelphia has been forced to do. Um, to get out of Pennsylvania, sorry, the Pennsylvania out of Philadelphia is being forced to do to come this way um, to hook up Harrisburg and Pittsburgh before it can build to any other cities. The only other special rule uh, regard is relates to the New York Central, which has to hook up all the cities in green, which isn't very legible on the camera here, but Buffalo, Syracuse, Utica, Albany and New York, and it has to have all those hooked up before it can build anywhere else. In my six-player player trial, I made a real mistake with the New York Central. The player that opened the New York Central ended up coming last um, because I spent far too long wallowing around in these silly 30 20 and $30 cities up here. Boston's a little bit better. Instead of competing out this way for the big bucks in Cleveland and Detroit and Pittsburgh and Wheeling and over here into... Um, Indianapolis and up there into Chicago and so on. These are where the big bucks are. Um, with the exception of New York, New York's very valuable. Um, you know, Boston's decent, Albany's decent, but <clears throat> but beyond that, you want to be getting out into the. Um, you want to be heading west in this game, as far as I can see. I could be completely wrong in that, but that's the way I look at it. Um, so, I think I've uh, I've played. A sort of trial game with six players of this just to learn the system and to get some idea of the strengths and weaknesses of each of the individual railroads um, and I think I'm hopefully got a bit better handle on on how to play so the other thing I should mention is that although each of the, the railroads differ in the fact that their starting location differs um, they each have 10 certificates so uh, each representing 10% of shares um, and uh, the majority shareholder, uh, the, having a simple majority, is it means you run the railroad. So, um, and if no one has any shares apart from you, you can't dump it off. You have to keep hold of it. So, but if someone else has one share in a company and you sell all yours, they become the president. So you can, if a company is really tanking, you can hand it off, provided someone else at the table has at least a share in it and the other thing that differentiates these is the number of cubes they get you can see i've um i've got the charters all good organized in in sort of in sort of cube quantity from lowest to highest so the new york new haven and hartford only gets four cubes to place for track and obviously that curtails its growth potential massively it can play four cubes so it can go to a maximum of four cities uh, Boston and Maine six, but you know down at the bottom here the C and O has twenty two, the Penn has six, Pennsylvania sixteen, Baltimore and Ohio um, eighteen, and the New York Central twenty. So there are four big companies and two tiny companies. And frankly, I don't know what to do with the New York, New Haven, and Hartford or the Boston and Maine, apart from maybe late game. If you've got loads of cash kicking around, you can't buy shares and anything else, and you need a vehicle for just trying to pump the stock value up. If you've got a few hundred dollars spare lying around, you might take them on, grow them quickly in the last few turns of the game just to make some generate some increased um, 
profits out of money that otherwise wouldn't be doing any work. Um, I don't see any other way to use them really. You're not going to take them on early. Uh, you're going to want um, companies with long-term prospects, I would have thought. Um, and that means that a couple of players are probably going to start as investors. Uh, I would think out of these companies, um, the Baltimore and Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, so the red, Chesapeake and Ohio, yellow, and the New York Central green will get started um, by four player, four different players. But that probably means that two players are going to invest and hold on and then try and sell out their shares and start these. Not sure which ones. Possibly, I think the nickel plate possibly in purple. Mm, not sure about the relative merits of the Erie or the um, Illinois Central. The Wabash looks a little bit too small to be to be an initial company, although it might be interesting because it starts in quite rich territory. But I'd have to have a look at what you can do with eight cubes out of Fort Fort Wayne because you'd be limited in what you can hook up. Anyway, um, that's the lie of the land. Um, I don't know quite how I'm going to uh, dip in and out of this in terms of covering it as things happen, but um, I'll just see how it goes. So the initial market round is done, and um, yeah, it's all pretty. It seems pretty symmetrical. Well, not symmetrical. That's not quite the right word, but. Um, if I were to play this a lot, um, solitaire like this, six player, I think I'd see the same things happening with a quite a significant regularity. You're limited when you start a company at opening it at those three share prices, 55, 60 or 66. They're printed on the board here. You can see tech one, 55, 60 and 66, which means that if you're starting a company, with and you, and in six players you have two hundred and fifty dollars, four lots of sixty. Um, capital is the most efficient way to get shares and uh, shares into your hand and capital into your company. So player one opened up, bought four shares of um, the Baltimore and Ohio. Well, you know it's the name of the game. So um, and it looks like it's in a strong position. So. Um, and then uh, lots of other players followed suit. So player two, four shares at 60 into the Pennsylvania. Another strong looking railroad. Player three, wasn't sure what to do, gave him a dice roll. Came out with, I think, quite a questionable option to invest in the Chesapeake and Ohio. Um, it starts in a location that's going to degrade in terms of income and it has a lot of it can't go this way because you're not allowed to build into Philadelphia until um, the pen has built out to Harrisburg and then to Pittsburgh. So it, going up this way, it's kind of blocked off, and the and the and the railroad limits are going to mean it's going to get shut out of New York by others before it gets there. So it's probably got to go this way towards the coal, which is valuable, but the build costs are. Require a lot of investment, so that 100, 180, um, 80, so 80 to go into there. So it's got to find a route through here that it can afford, and then Huntington's not that great a city, so it wants to be fighting up in this area and breaking out west towards Cincinnati. I think that's all quite difficult for this guy to get done, but anyway, that's what he. That's what he decided to do. So he's now trying to make a go of the C and O. Fourth player again gave him a dice roll, um, and he chose to open up um, the New York Central again. Um, not entirely convinced this is a, a great railroad, although I think perhaps it has long-term prospects. It does have a lot of cubes, like the C and O. So we'll see what he can do with it. And then five and six, with these four gone, I gave um, three and four rolls to see if they were just going to invest instead of take these rails, but they decided to play them. So five and six ended up investing. Player five just took four shares of the pen, which means the 
Pennsylvania Railroad is heavily capitalized. It's got $480 sat in its treasury, which should give it you know, plenty of opportunity to uh, get, get done what it needs to get done. And uh, player six went for a more balanced position, decided to take two in the Baltimore and Ohio and two in the CNO. Um, I think both of those players would like to bail out of their um, companies and start and start something here when they get the opportunity. So um, that's the starting position, um, and I'm just going to play uh, the operating rounds and and see what happens. And at a point where things start to um, get interesting, I'll drop back in with some more footage. So here in Baltimore and Ohio, we're just starting to reach a, an initial point of intrigue. Um, you can see the four companies that have been started from top to bottom, New York Central in green, Pennsylvania in red, Baltimore and Ohio in blue, and the um, Chesapeake and Ohio in yellow. And they're all building west. Now, these three in here, are about to be able to pick up their $40 coal tokens. $40 in coal there, $40 in coal there, $40 in coal there. And the Chesapeake and Ohio has sort of sectioned off two more coal tokens. So it's kind of claiming the coal if they can capitalize enough, get enough capital to actually get into these $100 and $80 hexes and claim it. Um, because they are they are low on money, they've got 100 and 120 odd dollars, whereas the Baltimore and Ohio is still sitting on 300 and something dollars. The, the uh, sorry, the Pennsylvania, that's red, Pennsylvania, 300 and something dollars. The Baltimore and Ohio sit somewhere in between, I think they've got about 190 in there, 100 chip at the bottom, 75, 80, 90, 195 ish. So um, they've all spread west, and there are, these three are claiming coal. The New York line does not have coal to claim, and that means he knows he's going to be falling behind. And the way to not be falling behind for him would, to, would be to buy another train, because he's got four cities connected there. These guys, red's got two, blue's only got one, yellow's only got one. So if he had more trains, he could serve more cities. He could um, he could then make more income. <coughs> so the difficult decision he's got is that there's only one more one train to buy before the twos get opened up. So if he buys the one train that's left, the cheapest one, at eighty dollars, he gets a cheap one train. But he's opening up the opportunity for either the Baltimore and Ohio or Pennsylvania that can afford it to go straight into the two train. That's going to double the maintenance costs from ten to twenty dollars. It's going to allow greater, quicker expansion at two hexes of rail build rather than one. Is he going to be the one that benefits from that? He decided this time round that no, he wasn't. That. That is going to benefit the most heavily capitalized companies, which are going to be red there, Pennsylvania, blue there, Baltimore and Ohio. That he's not going to get the most out of that. That someone's going to jump on that two train and red's suddenly going to be able to expand through Pittsburgh out towards Cleveland, which he wants to get to. Um, and that it'll add passen more passenger income for them more efficiently than it will for him because he'll be stuck paying forty dollars in costs for two one trains whereas they can ditch the one have the two and be running a much more efficient network so that doesn't suit him at the moment however the equation of him not having coal puts pressure on him to do something and I'm not entirely sure what that something is at the moment he didn't like the look of buying the last one this turn round We've got another business round, and I don't think he will that time. I think he wants to build down and hook up New York before he even considers making that two train an option for anyone. Um, 
once he's got into New York, he can still keep his income increasing from 2-1 trains if he has to. He might hope that someone else buys it. But anyway, very cagey stuff here at the moment because um, no, everyone's looking at that one and realising that it just hands the, the, the player after them too much opportunity to exploit the two train early. Um, so yeah, it's cat and mouse stuff. So in the second business round of this turn, the, um, uh, the New York Central finally decided that it needed to buy the other one train. Um, it's otherwise its share price, had, uh, its income had stalled at twenty, and its share price was going to stall out as well, and it was going to start falling behind the other railroads and with no income. $20 a turn. So it pushed up to 30 um, a turn by buying the other um, <clears throat> buying the other train. Um, so it's now got these two trains and if we come over here it could have made 40 if it had run Albany for 30 and Buffalo I'm sorry I don't think it could. No it couldn't. I was thinking Buffalo was 30 as well, but it wasn't, it was 20. So um, that's the most it could make. He wanted to build down here towards New York um, into this hex here so that he could hook up into New York and New Haven Hartford if he needed to. Um, couldn't afford to do that because what he wants to be able to do is when, the, when, the, when someone snaps up this two train, which they undoubtedly will, <coughs> his overheads are going to go up to 40 bucks and that's going to kill him um, his income will go up to 60 but it'll drop back to 20 and that'll, that'll, that'll send his share price tumbling backwards and that'll be a disaster for him but what he can do is um, sell both of these for another $40 and that will, ha that will give him enough money um, to buy another two train because the first one's 140 but from there on they go down in price so he's <clears throat> banking on being able to dump his, ditch his two ones and get into the two trains himself. Um, and that will keep his uh, income moving upwards and therefore his share price moving upwards. And that's all he's trying to do at the moment. He's just trying to stay in touch. But if, he'd, um, if he uh, maintained the status quo, then these guys were just going to continue expanding with their coal into richer cities. And they then... And they're so heavily capitalised as well that guys like this could have bought the one train and then a two train and run the whole damn lot and, and you know, just grown so quickly. So he's just doing what he can to stay up at the moment, um, keep up uh, with, uh, with everyone else. End of two business rounds and uh, on the stock value track. The Pennsylvania's pulled into the lead, the CNO and underneath it the Baltimore and uh, Ohio. It's on 82 bucks and the New York Central line is now lagging behind at 74. Um, yeah, you can see the expansion here. The, um, the Pennsylvania has got out to Cleveland and pushed up into uh, New York and has got lots of valuable cities. Um, got uh, th three trains, so can serve three cities, and that coal was guaranteed income, um, and about seventy-five dollars on the company, doing pretty well. Um, Baltimore and Ohio is in a very similar position. Three trains, forty bucks, sixty odd dollars on the company, and a, a decent position hasn't. And and can put push up into Philadelphia for twenty bucks and it, and increase his um, income and keep his share price going up. So he's pretty happy. Um, the other two rails are really stalling out quite badly. New York is pretty much run out of money, um, and is struggling to even find the cash to pay for the track to get into New York. Um, and after that, is. It's really going to struggle to get anywhere. Um, it's got a two train, but 
So the thing is that no one else bought shares in New York. So he was undercapitalized compared to um, to the to Baltimore and Pennsylvania. And so there's an extent to which the sort of group think then takes over because he's really struggling. People see the New York Central struggling, so they're less willing to invest in it next game. And so it struggles because, you know, it's got no capital to get itself sorted. Um, and to be honest, if there was a sucker who'd bought a couple of shares of this, he would dump it off right now. Um, you know, he's first in the first in the um, uh, the market rounds that's just uh, we've just ticked into. Um, and and if anyone owned any shares of this, he would sell out of it at seventy four a share, take that money and try and find somewhere useful for it. But you know, because because he's in. That company is in such bad shape, it's unbelievable, dreadful, no money, struggling to build track, can't get any income together, and uh, yeah, just falling further and further behind the, the, the well-capitalised companies with good positions and that coal income to keep them ticking over. Um, the CNO, the Chesapeake in Ohio, is in a similar boat. He's managed to, I mean, he's got a two train and he's managed to scrape together 110 bucks, which means that he can drop down here and open up this coal. So it'll take him the first business round to build the track and the second business round to pick up the coal. So his share price is, is staying flat and then possibly going up maybe one in the next two business rounds. The, the, uh, um, Pen, Pen, and the B and O will almost undoubtedly go up twice. I would think because they've just got enough money to build track and get better cities, um, and keep their income coming. You know, grooving along. Um, yeah, he'll be lucky to get one share price increase. And to be quite honest, this guy's going second in the share round, in the market round, and this guy does have shares in the C and O. Um, and he's got a very difficult decision to make now. This guy's got no decision at all to make. He's got $30 and he can't really sell out of his own company because he'll just kill the share price. Um, if you have shares in this orphan stocks at the end of the market round, your stock value goes down. He's just kill, slitting his own throat if he sells shares in the company that he's the only investor in. Um, he desperately needs people to buy shares out of there to our capital in his company so he can do something but no one's likely to do that over here he's in a very different position he's got someone to hand the company off to so there's a very difficult question is it in such bad shape that he can't make something out of it hmm that is really tricky to know because you know he the thing with the CNO the last game I played with this it always felt like it was just on the cusp of becoming really powerful and it never was it always felt like it could it might just turn the corner and then it didn't it might just turn the corner and then it didn't it just constantly gets outperformed by these red and blue or which will be spreading rapidly across here up into um, up into Detroit and over here into Indianapolis and down here into Cincinnati and the Blues all have probably got enough to get up over there into Chicago and we'll just suddenly be absolutely caning in money and he'll be stuck in these mountains here around Wheeling trying to fi find find the eighty bucks to to make it through to Cincinnati. Um, it's just a real tough route down here. Um, so the question is, will that coal long term, adding another coal for a hundred bucks, forty a turn, turn this company around, or, or is it just a sort of slow, dismal, sort of race of, of just falling behind? Should he just dump out of there and maybe just buy? Look, there's four stocks of four stocks of B and O. I'm sure he could pick up. 
and if there aren't there's pen stop still going he, he could just turn investor dump this car crash off pick up pen and B&O and you know and then ride them f until uh, until it's tech three time and then maybe start you know the nickel plate or the or the um, you know Illinois Central or something that you know might have some some prospects once he can capitalize it properly I think he should do that personally I think he should dump the the CNO off on this guy um, and uh, get out and just buy some buy some better stocks he can buy Baltimore and Ohio stocks for the same price as his own and the B&O looks like it's got much better prospects yeah I think that's what's going to happen so this guy's not doing anything this guy is going to switch around into B&O shares and this guy is going to have a painful expression on his face um, and then what the other players do I'm not entirely sure I think I think after that this fellow's probably going to be happy sat on his pen shares and maybe there he's going to have to buy another share of pen because if he doesn't then he will and uh, and the company will change hands so I think the Pennsylvania shares will get bought up by the two people that own it already um, anyway we'll see how things look after this stock round but I think the major move is that the CNO is getting handed off down here and uh, this guy's going to play an investor for a round or two until the tech level gets up and he can start the nickel plate or something else. Yeah, interesting stock round there. Player two um, sold off his uh, CN, uh, CNO shares and for the same price picked up four Baltimore and Ohio, which he reckons there is a, a safer bet than him running the CNO. Um, this player picked up the CNO. He had two shares in it, had to take it on. So then he dumps his two Baltimore and Ohio shares and uses that money to buy shares in his own company at the same price. But it means it capitalizes his company a bit better. So he was able to get $160 into his company's treasury. So the company's now stuck on to, um, stacked with two hundred and fifty, sixty, seventy dollars um, to invest in actually making some progress. So, although this guy couldn't have done much with the with the company, um, this guy has been able to take it on and might be able to have a little bit more success with it. But it has cost him his holdings in Baltimore and Ohio to have that opportunity but if he hadn't invested in it he was looking at a really really dead company so he didn't feel he had much of a choice now in retrospect this guy could have been seriously evil and sold the train out of the company um, uh, before he handed it off however I wasn't at that point clear that A, he was going to sell it, and B, that he was going to go um, first before this player in the turn order, because that's based on the amount of money you're holding, and that's not necessarily entirely predictable. So um, he couldn't guarantee that this guy was going to be holding more money and then going later in the, in the share round, and if he'd sold the train and he'd gone first... He'd adopt his shares immediately and he'd have been left holding a company that he'd sort of burnt down and then wasn't able to pass it off. So that all looked far too risky and he took the safer option of keeping the company viable just about and handing it over. Anyway, he sold his Baltimore and Ohio shares which went into there. Then it came over to this guy and um, because... This guy bought four Baltimore and Ohio shares. Baltimore and Ohio was heavily capitalized with a lot of money in its treasury and was able to buy its shares back out of the orphan stocks from the bank so, so its share price didn't go down. 
Um, and then, as uh, predicted, this guy bought his fifth share of uh, Pennsylvania to retain control of it. And the last player had to think about what he wanted to do. And he decided to pick up the last share of Penn for now. Um, I briefly flirted with the idea of selling a couple of shares of Penn and using the cash he's got to float um, something like the Boston and Maine, but it looked like a terrible idea. Um, so uh, he, he'd rather wait for a little while longer and then float something uh, in the Midwest that's actually got some prospects or some longer term prospects. And that's pretty much it um, for the stock round. Um, but we have had a company change hands and it'll be, it's now up to, up to a new player to see whether that extra capital that he's been able to push into it um, will make any difference. And also, I, the last thing I mustn't forget is that because um, there are uh, shares uh, in here, his company falls back on the on the track so he's now at 74 a share because there are unsold shares kicking around with the bank uh, so that's not a great start um, but I mean he could have the thing is he could have bought two of those shares back off the bank but there are four in there and that that money would have just gone into the bank and he needed it in the company to give the company a fighting chance of getting through the next um, couple of turns in decent shape. 